Good morning, Coleman, and thank you for tuning in to Coleman Today. I'm your host, Dustin Isom, and today is Thursday, October 24th. Coming up on Coleman Today, we highlight Domestic Violence Awareness Month with essential information for our community. Wallace State unveils its exciting lineup of fine and performing arts events for the upcoming year. And meet the Coleman Tribune's Pet of the Week, Peanut, an adorable terrier mix looking for his forever home. All this plus sports, weather, and more, but for now, let's dive into the top stories happening in Coleman today. With October being Domestic Violence Awareness Month, a list of information and questions have been compiled to help those seeking a way out. Consider the questions on screen and think about how you are being treated and how you treat your partner. Some signs include feeling controlled, isolated for friends and family, or experiencing threats and physical harm. Remember, when one person scares, hurts, or continually puts down the other person, it's called abuse. If any of these situations are happening in your relationship, talk to someone you trust or call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 for anonymous confidential help available 24-7. Meanwhile, Wall State Community College's Fine and Performing Arts Program has announced its schedule for the 2024-2025 to performance season. A total of 11 performances will be held on campus, with several favorite events returning as well as a number of new shows. The Wall State Theater Program will kick things off with its production of Peter and the Starcatcher, November 8th through the 10th at the Betty Leith Haynes Theater in the Garland E. Gudger Senior Student Center. Wall State's Concert Band and Jazz Band will honor our nation's veterans with its annual Salute to United States Veterans Program on Monday, November 11th at 7 p.m. in the Burrow Center Recital Hall. The Allegro Dance Theater, in conjunction with Ballet South, will host its annual production of The Nutcracker, November 23rd to 24th, at the Betty Leith Haynes Theater in the Gudger Student Center. The annual Christmas Spectacular will round out the performances for the fall semester and features all the Wallace State performing, um, performing ensembles. The performance will be held on Thursday, December 12th at 7 p.m. at the Betty Leith Haynes Theater in the Gudger Student Center. And, to finish out our top stories, this fall, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is teaming up with the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to support National Teen Driver Safety Week, which began on Sunday, October 20th and runs through Saturday, October 26th. It's important to discuss safe driving habits with teens every day, but the Teen Driver Safety Week serves as an opportunity for parents and guardians to have a conversation with teens about safe driving habits. Teen drivers need to know the rules of the road before parents hand over the keys. Data compiled by the NHTSA indicates that traffic crashes are a leading cause of death for 15 to 20 year olds. The rate of driver's license drivers involved in fatal traffic crashes per 100,000 licensed drivers for young female drivers was 22.74 and 58.73 for male drivers in 2022. NHTSA gives parents and guardians tips on how to talk about safer driving. These tips include discussions on how to influence positive behaviors and how to approach dangerous and deadly driving behaviors such as alcohol and other drug use, lack of seat belt, use, distracted driving, speeding, or driving with passengers. Parents can help teen drivers by discussing risky driving behaviors. Self-reported studies show that teens whose parents set firm rules for driving typically engaged in less risky driving behaviors and were involved in fewer crashes. For more information about National Teen Driver Safety Week, visit NHTSA.gov. That's it for today's top stories. After a short break, we'll dive into the world of sports, including standout performances from local athletes. What's in the magazine? October's peaking in. Oktoberfest in Coleman, let the fun begin. Heroes in our town, business all around, recipes for sharing, joy everywhere found. Colonel Coleman cheers, history in our ears, community so bright, polka through the night, sports spotlight today, kids come out to play, fields and courts are buzzing in the autumn's way. Germans came to stay, craps and brews on display. Coleman's heart is glowing in the folk away. Colonel Coleman.
Cold and cheers, history in our ears, community so bright, polka through the night. Hello and welcome back. Now it's time to find out what's going on in the world of sports. In today's sports segment, let's take a look at how some former Auburn and Alabama standouts are performing in the pros. Former Tigers running back Tank Bigsby showed why the Jaguars believe in him with another breakout performance against the New England Patriots on Sunday. Bigsby rushed for a career-high 118 yards and two touchdowns on 26 carries. The second-year player is becoming a force in Jacksonville's offense, already doubling his rookie season touchdown total with four touchdowns in 2024. Making his 2024 NFL debut, Anders Carlson made his mark with the 49ers on Sunday. He earned the start and drilled a career-long 55-yard field goal on his first attempt of the day. He also made a 24-yard field goal and finished two for two on field goals in his first appearance. Neither Carlson missed a field goal this weekend as Anders' brother Daniel converted all five of his field goals for the Los, Ange Las Vegas Raiders. On Sunday, Derek Hall did something with the Seahawks that he never did in four years at Auburn. He scored a touchdown. The second-year edge rusher scooped up a forced fumble and returned it 36 yards to the house for his first NFL touchdown. It highlighted another impactful performance from Hall, who recorded four QB pressures on the day. In a dominant 40-7 win over the Carolina Panthers, Noah Igbenegi showed why the Commanders took a chance on him as he matched his career high with six tackles. His PFF grade of 77.7 .7 ranked among the top five on Washington's defense for the week. Meanwhile, in Tuscaloosa, quarterback Jalen Milrow has been selected as a finalist for the 2024 William B. Campbell Trophy. Milrow, his, who is one of 16 finalists for the Campbell, will receive an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship from the NFF. All finalists will be recognized on December 10th at the 66th NFF Annual Awards Dinner at the Bellagio Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, with the winner being announced that night. Alabama's previous six finalists for the Campbell include Johnny Musso, Randy Hall, Stedman Sheely, D'Amico Ryans, Greg McElroy, and Barrett Jones, with Jones representing the Crimson Tide's only winner in program history. That covers sports for today, but make sure to check with the Coleman Tribune each day for the latest in sports coverage from across the area. We'll be back right after this message. Hello and welcome back. Now it's time to speed things up with a news rundown. Four stories in under four minutes. Last night, the Coleman County Volunteer Organization's Active in Disaster, or VOAD, held an informational meeting at Desperation Church to expand its membership and raise awareness about its vital work in the community. The event brought together local leaders and interested organizations to discuss VOAD's mission and the critical role, role it plays in disaster response and recovery. The meeting was a success, welcoming many new members and significantly growing their network throughout Coleman County, with those willing to answer the call of duty when needed. VOAD expressed heartfelt thanks to everyone who attended and joined. The Coleman City School Board has selected new leadership for the 2024 to 2025 term, as all school systems are required to reconstitute their board leadership annually. Board member Amy Carter has been elected to serve as president, with Jill Bradbury as vice president. Cheryl Harrison previously served as board president for two consecutive years. Upon assuming her new role, Carter expressed gratitude to Harrison, stating, I want to thank Mrs. Harrison for her consistent, strong leadership for the past two years. She represented us well as we reached several milestones. Superintendent Kyle Kaloff, looks forward to working with Carter and the entire board as the district advances with ongoing construction projects and maintains high achievements in academics. He said, Mrs. Carter will be a great board president. 
with their tremendous momentum, with their safety and growth plan and continuous academic achievements, this is a great time to be part of Coleman City Schools and certainly a great time to be president of the Board of Education. It's not too late to register your business or group for the upcoming Coleman Christ Kindle Market Parade. You don't want to miss this opportunity to be part of this magical evening with our community. The parade is scheduled for Friday, November 22nd, and will run through downtown Coleman. In case of bad weather, the parade will take place on Saturday. Registration for the parade is free, but if you'd like to compete for the best of awards and win cash prizes, there's a $10 registration fee. Prizes are $500 each for most creative, best spirit, best characters, and best vehicles, $1,000 for best marching band, and $2,500 for best overall. To register, visit ColemanChristKindleMarket.com. Don't miss out on being part of this special event. Meet the Coleman Tribune's Pet of the Week, Peanut, an eight-month-old terrier mix at the Coleman County Animal Shelter. This little guy has medium energy, but loves nothing more than cuddling on your lap. Everything is a new adventure for Peanut. His bright, inquisitive eyes reveal a heart eager for a forever home. He's the perfect candidate for a companion, hiking, or therapy dog. If you'd like to meet Peanut, visit the shelter at 935 Convent Road Northeast. It's open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. If Peanut has already found a home, don't worry, many, many of his friends are waiting for adoption. His adoption fee includes neutering, DHLPP vaccine, Portatello vaccines, rabies vaccine, wormer, a general vet exam, and a microchip. For more information, contact the Coleman County Animal Shelter at 256-734-5448 or email colemananimalshelter at co.coleman.al.us. That's your four stories in under four minutes. Now for a quick break before we look at the weather ahead and pay our respects with obituaries. I'll be right back after this message. Welcome back. Let's take a moment to pause and remember those who have lost their lives this week as we turn to obituaries. Barbara Ann Steele, 86 of Hansville, passed away on Tuesday, October 22nd at her residence. Funeral service for Mrs. Steele will be at 2 p.m. on Sunday, October 27th at Coleman Funeral Home with burial at Mountain Grove Cemetery. Visitation will be from 6.30 until 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 26th at Coleman Funeral Home. Bobby Jean Arrington, 82 of Coleman, passed away on Tuesday, October 22nd at Coleman Regional. Funeral service for Mr. Arrington will be at 1 p.m. on Saturday, October 26th at Coleman Heritage Funeral Home, with burial at Union Grove Cemetery in Holly Pond. Visitation will be from 6 until 8 p.m. on Friday, October 25th at Coleman Heritage Funeral Home. Susan Catherine Cantrell, 76 of Coleman, passed away Saturday, October 19th. Memorial services for Ms. Cantrell will be announced at a later time. Sharon K. Pegg of Crane Hill passed away Wednesday, October 23rd. A memorial service for Mrs. Pig will be held on Saturday, October 26th at Bethany Baptist Church at 10 a.m. That finishes up obituaries for today. Our thoughts and prayers go out to their friends and families. Now, let's take a look at today's weather forecast. Today, get ready for plenty of sunshine with a high near 82. Tonight, skies will remain clear as temperatures cool down to around 53. Tomorrow, the beautiful weather continues with sunny skies and a high near 84. Tomorrow night will be pleasant yet again and expect mostly clear skies with lows around 55. That concludes another edition of Coleman Today. Thank you for joining us. 
We'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. But for now, I'm Dustin Eisen with Coleman Today, wishing you a wonderful Thursday, Coleman.